What's up guys, my name is Ura and I'm the Codeholic. In this video I want to talk about the best programming language slash technology for web development. I want to say from the beginning that in my opinion there is no best programming, single best programming language out there for web development. And that's the end of this video, thanks for watching and see you in the next time. I'm just kidding. So I have prepared a couple of different web application types and I'm going to evaluate today's popular web development programming languages around that web application types. So here are the types I have prepared. These are static websites, dynamic websites, single page applications, APIs, real time web applications, e-commerce websites, and machine learning and artificial intelligence web applications. So this the last one means basically the web applications which needs ML and AI inside there. I know that there exists out there many different types of web applications which is not simply listed in this list and at least the following um, web application types will give you an idea how you can think in general when choosing the technology for your web application. So, I think that there is no single best programming language out there today. So, there is the best programming language probably for different types of web applications. And let's start with the first one, which is static websites. The best technology for static sites is obviously HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But today we have popular single page application frameworks like Vue, React and Angular, and we can create static websites based on that. So we can use static site generators like Next.js or Gatsby or Next.js and we can actually generate static sites out there. So if we talk about the best technology for static websites, in this case obviously HTML, CSS and JavaScript is the best technology, but you can build static websites on Vue, React and Angular. And you can even host that all your static website on a free hosting platforms like Netlify, for example, which gives you the awesome opportunities. By the way, I'm not affiliated to Netlify. So let's move on on the next web application type, which is dynamic websites. So what are examples of dynamic websites? So CMS, for example, blog application can be a dynamic or portfolio where you update your content very often. So portfolio is actually a type of web application website which can be both static and dynamic. So maybe if you are a single developer, freelancer developer, you can create portfolio uh, on your own as a static website and whenever you want to add something, you just open, edit the file and put it there and here you have that portfolio. But if you are an organization, for example, who has portfolio and updates the portfolio very often, maybe they want to, that to be dynamic website, right? So what are the dynamic websites? So the dynamic websites have database and they dynamically generate the, the in most cases they have the websites, I should say, they, there might be cases when they don't use the website, the database. But the main idea of the dynamic websites is that they generate the content dynamically. Okay, so if you access the same page twice, you might get the different output right there, like the one item may be added or something like this. So let's talk about the best technology for dynamic websites. So, and first of all, let's like list all the today's popular uh, web development languages. Like we have Node.js, JavaScript, basically. We have PHP, we have Python, we have Java, we have Ruby, we have uh, Go as well. So let's discuss which one would be the best to build a dynamic website. So in my opinion, you should uh, exclude Java from this list. I don't have any experience about Ruby, so I can't say anything about Ruby, but in terms of dynamic websites, and if you want, for example, build a blog, you should go with the technology which is more popular in terms of building blogs. For example, we know that WordPress is the most popular uh, blogging dynamic website type, I don't know. So this is what you should think about. Maybe you don't want PHP and you don't want WordPress, that's totally fine. You can make a research that, like the blog engines on Python, for example, and probably you will find something on Django or other frameworks on Python which have some engine of the blog. 
and you should go with that. So in my opinion, I personally think that building such kind of websites like blog, portfolio, some CMS type, type of websites, the probably the best solution will be PHP. So PHP has a lot of great popular frameworks like Laravel, Symfony, E2. It has a lot of content management systems like WordPress, Magento, Drupal, and so on. And you can choose one of them. You can even find the whole engine on that language and just build on that. Okay, so let's move on on the next web application type, which is single page application. And in this case, we have three main options, View, React, and Angular. So I, in this criteria, I'm not going to say that like one is bad, the, the, this one is the best. So we, we just can have a look at the popularity of these single page applications. And I encourage you to choose your technology based on the usage, based on how large community it has, how popular is this, how demanded it, it, it is. And uh, what is the learning curve and so on. So for sure, I can say that Vue is the easiest to learn among React and Angular. But I can also say that the React is at the moment most demanded and most popular. Vue's popularity is getting very uh, large and it's getting like Vue's getting much and much popularity. And actually, if we have a look at the a number of GitHub stars, we can see that the Vue actually is the most starred framework. So even it has most star, more stars than React. So you should consider all these things and choose. My favorite option is Vue, but that doesn't mean that you should not go with the React if you feel comfortable with that. I find Vue very easy to learn, very easy to use, and it has also like the excellent performance and I just love writing in Vue. Okay, I had experience previously on Angular, very tiny experience on React, but I prefer Vue. All right, let's move on the next web application type, which is API. So what technologies can be used to build an API? So that's a tricky question. And if we just take these major languages, which what I just mentioned, like Java or Python or PHP or Node.js. So all of them can be used to build an API. So which one to choose? That's a tricky question. So in my opinion, we should consider the fact what operations are done behind the API. So it might be behind the API, there might be some real time uh, things happening. So there might be some machine learning and artificial intelligence processes going on behind the API. So if that's the thing, if you have like machine learning processes going on behind the API, you should not think about PHP, in my opinion. So I love PHP. I am a PHP developer, actually. But uh, if I want to create a machine learning application, I would not choose the PHP. I would choose Python because Python is number one programming language for ML and AI. So you should actually think about what for what processes, what actions you need behind the API. There might be also cases that you're building a large system that might be CRM, for example, and you decided to go with uh, PHP Laravel, for, for example, and you're building that CRM and everything like goes very well. And now you want, for example, a real time functionality like the real time events or real time chat application and so on. So what you need to do, you have basically like multiple options. So if you are in the at the beginning of your development, you can decide that, OK, now I need real time applications and real time events, and I'm going to switch to a language where this real time things happening. So and you can switch to Node.js, for example, which in my opinion is the best one for real time web applications, or you can switch to Python. OK, which has also very great support to uh, sockets or Java. Java has also great support for sockets, uh, but not PHP again uh, for exact real time things. And that actually moves to our next topic, which is real time web applications. So I'm going to combine these APIs and real times in, into into single criteria criteria. OK, so I have built an awesome application on PHP, but when I need that real time functionality, I generally generally create a separate Node.js application and integrate that 
with my PHP application. So uh, again, we're talking about the API. So we are creating, for example, um, uh, for example, a CRM API on the front end, we might have some front end single page applications like Vue.js or React, and we're connecting that API to Vue application. And now we need chat. So what do we need to do? I would create a Node.js application, which serves like a real time chat server. And I'm going to integrate that in my Vue.js or React application on the front end. So that Node.js application shares the same database as the CRM, which is probably written in something else like PHP Laravel, for example, and I would create just like this. So you should look at the languages as a tool to build, to uh, make your life easier. You should not be like tied to one language and just don't want to look at another language. So in my opinion, I'm trying to be language agnostic. So which means that whenever I uh, don't know language and I think that um, I have at least basic knowledge to decide if that language will be the best for me or not. Again, I don't know Python, so I had written some code, but that doesn't count to knowing Python. So I don't know Python, but if I have to create a machine learning and artificial intelligence application, I would definitely go with Python. I would just spend one or two weeks to get familiar with that, and that's it. So I have like multiple years of experience in web development. I know the principles. I know many necessary things, so I would just switch to Python very easily. And that is how you should think in general. So if I want to create a very large corporate enterprise applications and I have like several years to build that, I would think about Java as well. So Java is a, a good, very good uh, programming language for that type of applications. Okay, but if I, if I have to create something in just one month, like the CRM one month, I would start thinking about using um, some easier uh, and faster programming languages, faster to develop, like Python or PHP. And I would start searching for technologies which might help me to build that CRM application, like a uh, customer management, maybe there is some, some CRM engine already. So I would just make a research and try to understand which technology, which language is the best for that my specific type of web application. Let's move on on the next one, which is e-commerce websites. So e-commerce websites can be built on many different types of lang languages like Python or PHP uh, or even Node.js and Java basically any what what we just um, mentioned but in my opinion uh, it really it really depends on for what I want that e-commerce website so if I want to learn something new I would choose the programming language which I want to learn so if I want to learn Python I would start creating my e-commerce application in Python if I want to learn Java I would I would choose Java if I want to create production ready e-commerce web application then, I would start thinking about using something existing. So there exists a lot of e-commerce engines. Um, Magento, for example, there is WooCommerce for uh, for WordPress. So there exists a lot. I'm sure there will be some e-commerce engines on uh, Python and on Django, for example. So you can stick with the technology you want as far as you find something good on that technology. If I make a risk, if I if I am a Python developer, I make a research. I want to create a production ready e-commerce website on Python. I make a research and for some reason, if I couldn't find anything, I really doubt that I couldn't find anything on Python. But for some reason, if I couldn't find a large, uh, not large, but decent and production ready e-commerce engine with online payments and multiple addresses and shippings and different prices and discounts and so on. And there are many other things to consider. I would switch to another language. I would start now making research on PHP. So Python doesn't have a ready e-commerce engine. Maybe I need to have a look in another language because I want that application, whatever I build, to be production ready. So I would make a research on PHP. If I couldn't find on PHP, I would switch to Node.js. So I, I just, I would choose the best programming language, which has the 
uh, very good engine, production ready engine on that language and just use that. Also, I want to uh, mention one thing. So uh, we actually talked about the real time of applications and in my opinion, Node.js is the best technology for building real time web applications like the shared uh, docs, like the Google Docs, for example, or a real time chat or something like this. Uh, in my opinion, Node is the best for that, but Python and Java has great support for WebSockets as well. But uh, Node.js is like simple to set up, simple to learn, simple to write. And if you have JavaScript knowledge, I think you also prefer Node.js rather than Python and Java for that types. I want to mention also image manipulation. So I created once a image comparison script. I wrote that on PHP, but I wanted to make uh, PHP is a single threaded language. And like uh, whenever I was running my script on hundreds of images, the process was very slow. And I wanted to uh, actually make this asynchronous. So I decided to rewrite that on Node.js. So the exact same algorithm which I wrote on PHP, I wrote on Node.js. And in Node.js, it was working like 10 times slower than in PHP. Actually, I was very surprised when I saw that first. I didn't believe. I just was checking maybe the algorithm is different or something like this. But the exact same algorithm was working much, much slower in Node.js about image processing, image manipulation, image comparison than in PHP. So then finally, we got something weird, but we have a script which compares two images to each other and gives us the difference. And then I created a Node.js package which asynchronously opens the Puppeteer package, uh, npm package, makes a screenshot of the website and compares, then calls that PHP script which actually makes the comparison. So again, I used two different technologies for such a small project, like for image comparison, I used PHP for like making synchronous screenshots, uh, I, I used Node.js. Again, because I'm just trying to be language agnostic and I'm trying to use all the great features of these or that languages. To sum up our video. So if you want to create uh, static websites, so of course you need HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but you can use uh, Vue, React or Angular for uh, and generate the static websites out of that. So for dynamic websites, my personal favorite choice uh, is Python and PHP. And you can have a look at the ready engines for dynamic websites. So if you want CMS, you can find the Django or PHP CMS. If you want like the blog, you can find the blog engine on your technology and so on. Single page applications right here. We have three options, Vue, React and Angular. In my opinion, Vue uh, is very uh, easy to learn and very like easy to start for beginners. React is most popular at the moment. So considering these facts, you need to decide what you need to do for APIs. Again, as, as I mentioned, we need to have we need to consider what is behind the API, what operations are done behind the API for real time web applications. I think Node.js would be the best option, but Python and Java are also options. But I think PHP is not an option. So for e commerce websites, as I mentioned, you need to choose uh, the ready engine depending on what you are actually doing, like the uh, PHP engine or Python engine. And if you want some web applications which has image manipulation there, I think you should not use Node.js. And if you have a web application which has some machine learning and artificial intelligence code right there, I th my favorite and my recommended option would be Python. And that's the end of this video. I hope I helped you in something. Just leave a like, share this video, subscribe to my channel if you're new, check out my Twitter and follow me on Twitter as well. And thanks for watching and see you in the next time. Cheers.